Hey guys, Liam here, giving you another news flip going over a few interesting bits of news in between covering individual games and all the bigger bits. Just my way of helping keep you up to date on all things Linux, Steam Deck and more, and all while keeping it short and focused. So let's begin. Firstly, it appears that Steam, and so Steam Deck, will be getting file sharing where you will be able to select to allow transfers of game files between systems. This was found by the Steam database creator who noted in a tweet in October last year that Valve were seemingly working on peer-to-peer -peer Steam downloads on LAN. And they added a fresh follow-up tweet to note that in a recent update some strings for this were added, noting that this feature allows your PC to transfer game files to and from other PCs or Steam decks on your local network reducing your internet traffic while downloading or updating a game, and you'll be able to limit to your own devices, friends, or any other user. The point is that this will probably be faster and cheaper for users to do it this way, rather than downloading again through the internet via Steam. So for people on metered connections, it will likely save a fair amount of money just transferring game installs via LAN between devices. For Steam Deck, that could be quite ideal. I can think of numerous times I've already had a game installed and updated on my big PC. That would have been so much faster and easier just to have my Steam Deck pull it over. In a quick bit of graphics driver related news, the AMD RAD-V Vulkan driver that's used for various AMD GPUs on Linux and the Steam Deck as well, had a code merge request recently polled in for a future version that could potentially give more performance. In the merge request, the developer noted that they saw an 11% improvement on reducing CPU overhead of the draw path. This is one of the benefits of open source. You can see all of these little merge requests happening in real time and at any time on the free desktop GitLab website. Next up, we have Dell doing some really weird things with Concept Nix. They've recently announced their Concept Nix game controller, and it sounds pretty wild. It has a fingerprint reader in the middle, a dual thumb scrolling bar on the bottom of it, with adaptive triggers, and they threw out the D-pad for what they call an Omnipad that sounds a lot closer to the thumb pads on the Steam Deck. It seems interesting, but it might never actually see the light of day for consumers because it's all based around the concept of the Nix system. It seems interesting, but it might never actually see the light of day for us normal consumers because it's all based around the idea of the Nix concept system that they're developing right now. And concept Nix is basically like having this big home server in your house that you can all log into and use across different screens at the same time. So the idea is that you would pick up this Concept Nix game controller, scan your thumb in the middle, and then it would log you in and bring up everything you need. It sounds cool, but it might never actually happen. And now as an update to Deck Verified, Valve somewhat recently crossed over the 7000 mark when it comes to playable and verified together. The numbers, according to Steam Database, which actually gives the more real number because it also includes unlisted games, no longer sold, that you can still play if you own them. The current numbers are 4,434 playable, 2,720 verified, and 2,475 unsupported. There is still a really long way to go compared to the overall Steam library, which is at over 80,000 games. But of course, Valve doesn't stop you installing and trying to play anything on Steam Deck. This is only what they've officially tested. Here's one for fans of other handheld gaming devices. Work to get full Linux support in for the Ioneo Air and the Air Pro continues on, with work going into the Linux kernel to support them, with the developer noting on it that older models are not being supported due to the differences in the embedded controller, and you can't control the fan speed either, so for now it's only their newer devices. Hopefully when SteamOS 3 releases in full to the public, if Valve still use an older kernel, they will pull in patches like this so that perhaps vendors like Aeoneo can use it officially, or so that people who already own the devices could flash SteamOS 3 onto them. That would sure be nice. Speaking of Steam, just recently, 
they had quite a record-breaking milestone too, in fact. They recently hit 10 million people actually in-game at the same time for the first time ever. On top of that, the other record that was broken was over 33 million people online on Steam at the same time. Now, I can't even begin to comprehend that amount of people. It just boggles my mind. Just think of the level of data that Valve is processing from downloads to payments. It's insane. Finally, the compatibility layer, Wine, is getting very close to releasing version 8.0. This is the software that Valve's Proton compatibility layer uses on Linux and Steam Deck to run Windows games. The current version of Proton is using a much older version of Wine, so later this year we'll likely see Valve rebase the version of Wine used for Proton to the 8 series that should hopefully keep up the improvements to all the better game compatibility. That's it for today, as always let me know what you think in the comments, thank you for watching and for being here and I will see you later.